Over the last century, plastic has flourished as one of the most significant and essential parts of our everyday life. Because of its affordability, durability, malleability, and lightweight, global plastic production had grown to 322 million tons in 2015. But on the other hand, since the 1940s, we have produced about 6.3 billion tons of plastic waste. Now, plastic has been posing a massive risk to the environment and marine life as well as human health. Plastic pollutes the terrestrial and aquatic environment by remaining in its original chemical form for a much longer period as microplastics. Slowly degrading plastic materials release toxic chemicals into the surrounding environment and pollute its soil and water. Plastic pollutants could also percolate down the surface and contaminate groundwater, which we often use as safe drinking water. Recent study analyses 159 tap water samples from 14 countries and finds 81% of tap water samples contained plastic pollutants. The plastic pollution problem appears to be more critical in coastal cities of developing nations, through where high volumes of plastics enter the ocean. Marine pollution is a huge problem leading to an array of abnormal changes to the water ecosystem and affecting human health over time. Such risks steadily cross mandrawn administrative boundaries and gradually amplify its threat to wider civilization. The first plastic industry in Bangladesh started its journey as a small-scale industry in the 1960s by making plastic toys. Over the last 20 years, the polymers import increased from around 14,000 metric tons in 1990 to 696,500 metric tons in 2011. Bangladesh is employing about 2 million people in approximately 3,000 plastic product manufacturing units. Plastics brought in more earnings, fueling the journey towards a modern society. But problems of handling the vast amount of plastic waste comes along with the increase of GDP. However, the state has not done much for raising public awareness and enforcing environmental protection and corporate responsibilities against plastic pollution. Therefore, in this video, we will explore the complex interface of plastic waste governance, drinking water contamination, and future public health risk in the case of Dhaka City in Bangladesh. Between 2017 and 2018, we made a list of single-use plastic waste produced at our home, observed items in grocery shops, and their packaging, randomly checked waste dumping points to validate and update our list. We randomly approached 10 people from our close network to learn how many items they bought in the last three days, and how many of them are plastic covered, and how they manage their plastic waste. We followed the waste, how it is collected, where it is disposed of, who collects them, the network of waste management agents, etc. In addition, we interviewed six local-level waste collectors. They gave us detailed information on how they categorize the plastic wastes, and what are the life cycles of those wastes. We have also spoken to the city corporation who is responsible for all waste management within the city. We learned about the flow of waste from designated dumping stations to the landfilling sites, waste segregation and management, relevant policies and bottlenecks, and the way forward. Simultaneously, we reviewed existing policies, legislation, guidelines on plastic production, use, and management. Despite being the first country to ban the use of poly shopping bags since 2001, there is extensive use of single-use plastics Bangladesh. High population, especially in the capital city Dhaka, exaggerate the condition. The amount of waste generated is affected by the average income of the people, and as income rises in the megacity, waste production and inappropriate disposal are increasing exponentially. Bangladesh continues to grow in the global plastic market, and our everyday toiletries are available in plastic wrap in different sizes from as tiny as a single-use. Street food and tea stalls have replaced porcelain plates and cups with single-use plastic items. Drinking water, beverages, snacks, food items, and most of the daily food items come in some sort of plastic case or container. As an aggregate, Bangladesh generates 336,000 tons of plastic waste per year, which is only projected to rise over time. Despite its potential environmental cost, the plastic industry is booming in Bangladesh. In the fiscal year 2017 to 2018, Bangladesh exported around $1 billion worth of plastic products, which makes plastic the 12th highest export earning sector in the country. The flourishing plastic economy synchronized with the country's plastic consumptions too. The average annual per capita plastic consumption is about 6 kilograms in Bangladesh. 
A combination of inefficient policy, fragile infrastructure, weak enforcement, lack of priority, and poor political leadership constrained Bangladesh's environmentally sustainable waste management system. Plastics keep degrading and flowing in nature for centuries. As a result, significant amounts of single-use plastics fail to travel to landfills through informal and formal waste collection systems in the major cities. Instead, they are disposed of discreetly and often clog up our drainage and sewage system. Encountering polluted landscapes, bags fluttering in the wind, tangled wires covered in plastic, and in the corners of streets are familiar scenarios in Bangladesh. Big cities like Dhaka and Chittagong experience localized floods following any heavy pouring, and plastic is often one of the major reasons. RAC Institute of Governance and Development ran a detailed waste audit among more than 600 households across different socioeconomic neighborhoods in Dhaka City. Per capita average waste generation is 377 gram per day out of which 366 gram is organic and the rest 11 gram is inorganic. Plastic items contain 60% of all household inorganic wastes. Dhaka City corporations have no initiatives in separating plastic from organic wastes at any level of collecting, processing and dumping. Thus, at any dumping points in Dhaka, around 17,000 tons per year of plastics are going to the landfill with regular kitchen wastes. These openly dumped plastics either make a layer of plastic in the subsurface or get washed to the rivers and seas. Therefore, non-degradable plastic waste accounts for 73% of litter in any aquatic habitat, with roughly 50% of them disposed of after a single use. Nevertheless, these untold stories of plastic do not end within our sight. They continue to borrow life from other organisms, through routes we consider safe, one of which is groundwater. As the landfill sites in Bangladesh start receiving more and more plastics every year, the future risk of groundwater pollution becomes eminent. As the population rises and industries continue to grow, Bangladesh's dependence on groundwater increases proportionally. Bangladesh has come a long way since the 1990s in formulating policies to bring environmental pollution under control. Factory Act, Environmental Pollution Control Ordinance, DACA Municipal Ordinance, Urban Management Policy Statement, National Agricultural Policy, Environmental Conservation Act, National Environment Management Action Plan, Renewable Energy Policy, the Local Government Act 2009. These policies talk about the basics of citizen rights, roles and responsibilities of the city corporations, and environmental protection, and so on. But they are mainly looked after by the Department of Environment and other government departments who often do not work in close coordination with the city corporation. None of these policies has prioritized plastic as a part of the environmental problem in Bangladesh. In addition, policies do not consider the gravity of plastic pollution in groundwater resources in Dhaka and lack proper implementation strategies. In fact, Bangladesh was one of the first countries in the world to implement a nationwide ban on plastic shopping bags. But the ban was not genuinely successful given countrywide lenient enforcement. And ironically, Bangladesh is at present one of the largest users of plastic in the world. Prevention is better than cure. Reduction of plastic use, starting from public awareness and legislation to remove plastic microbads from self-care products. At present, the only widely employed method in recycling plastics is mechanical. The organic component is recovered by cleaning and is then shredded, melted, and remolded, frequently in a mixture with virgin plastic of the same type, this mixture is then used to manufacture new plastic goods. Another plastic management process, incineration, is a debated yet viable technology for plastic waste management. It produces less toxic substances under appropriate conditions with variable amounts of potentially valuable byproducts. In addition, alternatives of plastics are being introduced, being called bioplastics derived entirely from sustainable sources of biomass. They can be made from a combination of agricultural waste and disposed of plastic bottles and other containers, allowing freedom to tweak their properties. As for the most remediation strategies, they are viable but expensive. The feasibility of scaling in a developing country like Bangladesh is questionable. Proper development of the policy for chemical exposure caused by plastic must be urgently implemented with encouraging research in the global south. Developing more innovative and recyclable plastic materials and efficient recycling and wastewater treatment processes must be investigated thoroughly.
The mass population of Dhaka city needs to be made aware of the mechanisms and severity of the problem and the hazards of plastics on human health. Plastics are essential materials in the 21st century, practically found everywhere, powerfully influencing our daily lives in many different ways. Hence, it is urgent to accelerate research and understanding of how plastics can impact human health. Plastic does not only pollute the surface environment, freshwater, and marine ecosystems, but toxic elements released from plastics also percolate down the surface and contaminate groundwater, which will do great harm to human health. Therefore, for the sake of better earth in the years to come, we should first, make a call for zero plastic pollution. Second, extract as much plastic as we could from nature. The third, invest in new technologies to clean plastic from the nature. The fourth, prepare ourselves to face the health consequences in future from plastic contamination.